Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing my learnings from Middle Discourses 96. Uh, title of the discourse is with Isukari and it is also the known as the Isukari Sutta. Uh, the link to the entire discourse is given in the description. You can read and get your own insight also. Uh, now, Isukari, the, 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 the context is that Buddha was staying in Savatthi in Jetta's Grove and Usukari, the Brahmin, went up to the Buddha uh, and then uh, he said, Master Gautama, the Brahmins prescribe four kinds of service. Uh, for a Brahmin, aristocrat, peasant, menial. So in they have the in their time, the Vedas, they had these four castes and everything. So they said that uh, Brahmins prescribe four kinds of service. Uh, for a Brahmin, aristocrat, peasant or a menial, this is the service they prescribe for a Brahmin. For a Brahmin, they prescribe the service that Brahmin, aristocrat, peasant and menial may all serve a Brahmin. That means for all four castes, because they considered the Brahmin caste to be the most superior caste. And in the previous discourses also, we have the similar theme we have seen, like the 93, 94, 95, where Buddha has clearly refuted the claim that uh, the uh, the uh, Brahmins are the most superior caste. He has clearly refuted and, you know, uh, 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 clearly defeated that claim that they are the superior most castes. So again, in that, in this, it's one of the, you know, in the similar when this sutta is also is where they are saying that brahmin can receive the service from all the four castes Aristoc uh, aristocrat peasant and menial may serve an aristocrat that means a brahmin cannot serve an aristocrat because it's a higher caste then they said that a peasant or menial may serve a peasant a peasant cannot receive service from brahmins so brahmins is the highest aristocrat second peasant is third and fourth is menial caste shudras and menial, they are saying only the menial can serve a peasant, as a peasant. So now Buddha asked him one question. Did the whole world authorize the Brahmins to prescribe these four kinds of service? He is directly challenging this whole thing. And who has authorized you to prescribe these rules? So he said, no master, master, no master Gautama. Uh, so master, uh, Gautama, Buddha said that it is as if they were to force a stick on a poor penniless person, telling them they must eat it and then pay for it. In the same way, the Brahmins have prescribed these four kinds of service without the consent. So it's like forcing someone to accept something, right? Uh, this is the way Brahmins have prescribed these rules, uh, making them the highest caste and making the others serve them. And So Buddha said, Brahmin, I don't say that you should serve ev everyone, nor do I say that you shouldn't serve ev ev anyone. I say that you shouldn't serve someone if serving them makes you worse. This is the crux of this Sutta. That Buddha says, when you serve someone, you look into your own thing. That serving them, does it make you better or does it make you worse? Right? It's not just the caste that you serve someone with a higher caste, then this good or someone with a lower caste. That is No, it is not like that. Buddha says, I say that you shouldn't serve someone if serving them make you, makes you worse, not better. And I say that you should some, some, serve someone if serving them makes you better. So even serving a menial, a shudra or an untouchable, right? Who, it, if it makes you makes you wise, if it make, make the faith goes stronger, if it makes come, brings you at peace, you should serve. So this is the, you know, the revolutionary you know, ideas that Buddha had, that totally all four castes are equal, Buddha had clearly said. And look into yourself, when you serve someone, what change comes in you, right? And we can also reflect it in our life, in, in not only the service, but for the work that you do. What changes, you know, come in our life? Is our livelihood proper? Right? Uh, Buddha says, if I were to ask an aristocrat, that means a Kshatriya, who should you serve? Someone in whose service you get worse or someone who, in whose service you get better? So aristocrat would say, someone in whose service I get better. And similar response, the Brahmin, peasant, manual will also give. Right? So then Buddha says, Brahmin, I don't say that coming from an eminent family makes you a better or worse person. So first Buddha said, caste doesn't make you a better or less person. The, uh, right? Second Buddha says, not the family also doesn't matter. Because Buddha said, many people from the eminent families, they kill living creatures and all. Steal, commit sexual misconduct, use false speech. Right? That, that way, it... Just a good family is also no guarantee that serving them is good, right? Then, uh, okay, 
then uh, looks just because someone has a good look beautiful uh, uh, look doesn't uh, mean that you know they are someone something good or better then uh, isukari said brahmins prescribe four kinds of wealth uh, wealth they prescribe for a brahmin is living on arms that means the brahmin has to live on arms aristocrat lives on bow and quiver uh, a peasant lives on farming and animal husbandry and a menial lives on scythe and flail, flail right so uh, these are the four kinds of wealth that brahmins prescribe again buddha asked but brahmins did the whole world authorize the brahmins to prescribe these four kinds of wealth he said no so uh, again buddha said this is as if you are forcing a stick on a poor penniless person telling that you have to eat it and you have to also pay pay for it right now understand very very deep thing what buddha is saying i declare a person's own wealth is the noble transcendent teaching but they are reckoned by recollecting the traditional family lineage of their mother and father wherever they are incarn- incarnated if they incarnate in a family of aristocrats they are reckoned as an aristocrat if they incarnate in a family of brahmins they are reckoned as brahmin peasant as a peasant menial as a menial so buddha is saying the true wealth is the noble transcendent teaching it has nothing to do with the castes but only thing is that it's like where they have incarnated in which family they are said to hold that caste for example buddha is giving a fire that there is a fire out of a log it is called a log fire there is a fire out of a twig it is called a twig fire so grass grass fire fire out of a cow dung it's called cow dung fire but buddha is saying leave aside everything the i declare that a person's own wealth is the noble transcendent teaching the teaching the dhamma is the real wealth of the person then then there are these things uh, they that uh, buddha is saying that suppose in whichever uh, a person is a caste if he goes into the teaching they refrain from killing living creatures refrain from using false speech they are not covetous malicious they have the right view they succeed in the system of teaching similar way brahmin peasant menial anyone can do right so that is anyone can achieve so again buddha says that all castes are equal then uh, buddha says this question which earlier discourses also it came that is only a brahmin capable of developing a heart of love uh, not an aristocrat peasant menial to so he said the brahmin student said no sir anyone can develop is the brahmin only capable of taking some bathing paste and go into a river and purify himself so he said no sir any anyone can do right so those kind of questions were there and by the end he said asukuri was totally convinced he said master excellent master gautama excellent from this fourth day fourth may master gautama remember me as a lay follower who has gone for refuge for life so isukuri becomes a lay follower of the buddha so simple straightforward discourse also these similar lines the uh, in the earlier discourses like 93 94 95 are also on the similar lines that all castes are equal we have to look into ourselves the what service that we do is it helping us is it making us for faithful trusting wise we have to look into that not whom we are serving so one thing second is true wealth is the dhamma right the hearing of the dhamma the the listening of the dhamma practice of the dhamma that is our true wealth so we have to regardless of whatever caste we are born in we have to regard our dhamma as our true wealth right so we can reflect on these things i hope this video was useful do share your insights and thoughts in comment section thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya namo buddhaya